Now, one of the things I used to enjoy about old PC games was that they were sometimes boxed with a cloth map. If you remember the Ultimate games, they always came with a map and I, I always enjoyed this. Now, Lands of Law did not come boxed with a map, but it did have these little booklets here. And I always enjoyed reading these and I appreciated these, these booklets because they, they expanded upon the history of the lands and it made it feel more authentic that this was a world with character, that there, there was more to this world than, than meets the eye, there was more going on behind the scenes. This was a world with history. All the people that inhabited this landscape, that they had a, a historical background and I thought that that was, I thought that was nice. If you take a look at this booklet here, it takes a look at the different races. As you can see, it also gives you a chronology of the lands, a history of the lands of lore. It also gives you a little look at the beasts of the lands. Now there are more monsters than this in the, in the actual game, but it gives you a little taster of what you're going to be up against when you enter the dungeons and the dark, forbidden places inside the lands. We have here the, we have here the dark times. After the fall of the Golden Age, the world was plunged into darkness. The races reverted to their primitive state, the ancients having annihilated one another. And we get to see a little bit of this in the second game, Guardians of Destiny. The dark, the dark times, the dark wars, the ancients, all of this is explained in the history of the lands going throughout the three games that they released. But the first two games in particular, they cover this particular space of history. We get to see the Dark Wars, the rise of the Dark Army in the first game. And then we get to learn a little bit more about the Ancients from the Dark Times, from the Dark Wars of old in the Guardians of Destiny. And we learn more about what these Ancients actually are. Who is the Drarakor? The, the Drorical, for me, was my favourite character. In all of the, all of the lands, uh, he, he was my favourite. And in the first game, he was so mysterious, enigmatic. Who, who was this person? This big red creature? And in the second game, we get to learn more about him. His history, what is he, what he's about, what is he trying to do in the lands? And as the story on reveals itself, it's, it's just great. And I think the best thing about it is that it's all built upon this, this, this history, this history that they built up from the first game. And I, I, wish, it, I wish they'd made more games in the series and I, I, I wish they'd expanded upon it. It's a shame that they didn't. It really is. But, you know, what they did manage to do, it's, re it's really good and I, I, I enjoy it to this day. To this day, it's one of my favorite video game fantasy worlds. I just wish, as I've said previously, I just, I just wish they'd expanded upon it. I think it's a shame that, that it ended in the, on the third game. Which I will admit, the third game, and I, I hate to say this, but the third game was, uh, for me, I felt was the weak, well, it was the weakest out of the series. It, it was rushed during development, and you can see it when you play the game. It, it doesn't have the feel of the other games, you know. There's some innovations in it if you play it, but. It's missing an ingredient that's... It, 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 it doesn't have what the previous two games has. I, I'd have to go into some retrospective about it. There's no, there's no place for me to talk about it in this video, because this video is really about Lands of Roar, or Throne of Chaos, but I'd have to go into some retrospective over it, some, go into the history of the development of the game, and there's no time for that now. But still, I, the first two games... Great stuff. The booklet also um, 
informs us of some of the locations inside the lands. Here, uh, we've got the Urbish Mines, which you visit in the course of the game. Place of riches, mouth of ruin. For generations, it says here, before the Urbish Mining Company had been set up, the Urbish Caves had been a, a trap for heroes, especially the dungeon pillaging breed. The Urbish Caves had always yielded riches. If you went down in the caves, you could always find wonderful treasure. But you always found horrible danger, too. Hmm. You'll, be de you'll be meeting some of that danger in this game, that's for certain. The place was cursed. Folks call it the mouth of ruin. Of the few people who ever made it back to the surface, most came back insane. Or horribly diseased. Or even undead. <laughs> Not a very pleasant place. You will have to discover its mysteries as you journey into the lands.